Well, um, if you're uh, putting fiber optic uh, cable in, in a roadway right away, make sure it's not moving. Uh, I, I am Robert Jowers I'm with the Tennessee uh, Department of Transportation, and I'd like a deleted discussion here on uh, stabilizing the landslide. It was caused by the uh, 2019 February flood uh, using a, a unique application, uh, which I, I, I'd like to discuss. It's ground anchors with uh, concrete blocks. Whoop, too fast. Uh, Tennessee <clears throat> has uh, nine different physiographic regions, uh, topographic regions. Uh, on the far east is the, uh, uh, the Blue Ridge, the Unaka, some call it Unaka. Uh, as uh, you go westward, the Valley and Ridge, and even more westward, the, the Cumberland Plateau. Uh, the transition between the Valley and Ridge and the Cumberland Plateau is where the site is, the Interstate 40 uh, corridor. <clears throat> it's a uh, it's a, like a 6% grade highway, and uh, ex it exposes this Pennington Shale, or the colluvium of the Pennington Shale. Uh, it's, uh, th this, this Pennington Shale is indic uh, indicative. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it really stands out even to an engineer like me. It, it has this crimson color. We have a box of rock on the right. We box our rock up when we core it. And, but, but in the drill rig, you can see on the left, it, it shows this real crimson type color because they're using water and air. Uh, this is an artistic rendering, but uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's the colluvium that, that, that concerns us. It collu what is colluvium? It's a uh, material that's weathered from a, uh, and, and deposited by gravity, as opposed to alluvium, which is material deposited by water. So uh, the colluvium, <clears throat> colluvium is, is typically a, a landslide maker, but uh, it, and uh, but the Pennington shale also uh, is differentially weathers. Differentially weathers. If you if you ever seen a roadway cut uh, driving down the road, you'll you might see an overhang, and that's typically because the uh, the material beneath uh, the overhang has differentially weathered. It's like a shaley material that. Uh, erodes real easily, and on top of it, it's rock. Well, over the 200 million years uh, in making of this, it, it, it's done basically the same thing. And uh, the sandstone that, that is over the top of it, the, uh, the crab orchard sandstone and, uh, and the gizzard group, uh, it breaks off and, in, and enters this colluvial matrix debris and uh, we, we during the uh, during the site and characterization, we found boulders as uh, wide as 50 feet in diameter. I, uh, I'd like to speak to that a little bit more. Uh, but uh, also, it uh, it's uh, impervious. Uh, it's it's it uh, it takes on water. It's more impervious than the underlying strata. And that, that creates uh, poor water pressures, and uh, that's that's always a, a, a good one when you have water in a landslide. But uh, when you have a, a practical amount of colluvium, we we can handle that in a practical manner. But when it gets to be this deep, we have to go to impractical measures like the one that. Uh, uh, we, we do what we're doing here. And uh, in 1968, when I was a young engineer, uh, this uh, the, the interstate was created, and uh, and this is the this is the site uh, taken from an aerial photograph by George Hornell. Uh, but it, this is a fill slide, more caused, in my opinion, by poor construction practices, and, and not so much by the by the colluvium that's sliding on uh, uh, behind it. 
It's a side heel feel template. I'm a, I'm a civil engineer, I, uh, but um, here's another shot of it. Uh, this whole corridor is climbing up this, uh, this, this hillside, the transition between the Valley and Ridge and the Cumberland Plateau, and we must contend with this colluvium from the uh, Pennington Shale. We've, uh, we've done a lot of things since, uh, since, uh, through the years, but in 2017, we were monitoring the slope with a uh, slope inclinometer, which is just a pipe. Uh, but these pipes close off very easily, and they, they got so, we, we, we replaced them. And uh, the engineer, uh, uh, Golder and Associates uh, from here in Atlanta, uh, we, they, they performed this work for us, and we, we asked them to write a report, including recommendations. And they laid the, uh, the groundwork for this, uh, uh, these ground anchors uh, in 2018. Well, then in 2019, the, um, we have a flood, <clears throat> February 22nd uh, of that year. So we usually get uh, our, our weather, our, our moisture from the Gulf, and it uh, comes in from northeasterly easterly direction, and then it passes through. But uh, in, in this instance, we had a high pressure system on the north and the east, and uh, this system stayed there and spun and rained and rained and rained. A similar uh, system worked its way in Kentucky in late July, and, and many people were, were drowned because of this flooding. Uh, but two, we had over 100 sites uh, throughout Tennessee. We had landslides, but the two in particular on the Interstate 40 uh, really caught our attention. Uh, we had over 15 inches of rain uh, in the dark blue areas. This is the National Weather Service uh, uh, Equa Peninsula uh, map. Um, but I thought that was real neat uh, to show all the areas that we got the most rainfall, and I, that's where we had the most landslides as well. But uh, to, uh, to, to, re to stabilize or restrain a landslide, you, you can use a, a stone buttress uh, or a soldier pile and wagon wall. Uh, with or without uh, drilled anchors. Or, lately, we've been using reticulated micro piles and to some degrees of success. But these, those are relatively shallow landslides. Here, and uh, this is the same Pennington Shell uh, up in uh, a landslide near Kentucky, uh, where we're using a, a stone buttress. See how uh, the um, we're removing all the failed material, and then we'll come back and. Um, and we'll replace that with rock, and the, the rock is buttressing the material that's uphill of it. So we, that's, uh, we also can use a, a, a soldier pile and lagging wall. We drill a hole in the ground and put these piles in it, and you might see the, uh, that row. Uh, those are ground anchors, uh, permanent earth ground anchors. Well, speaking of anchors, these drilled anchors, uh, that's, that's what is done. We drill a hole laterally in the, in the ground um, and then hope that hole stays open and, and, and then shove a piece of reinforcing element, typically steel, into the ground. And then uh, after that, we sh shove a tube into the ground and uh, force grout into it and make a grout bulb, and then we can we can apply some tension on it, and then and then after that you can lock it off with a with a nut or some uh, structural mechanism, and uh, it, it applies tension on the ground and a, and a force to resist the downward forces of the landslide. Where is it? Okay, and uh, this is a landslide uh, on the eastbound portion. Uh, it, uh, you can see the tension crack. We, uh, 
we put, I put a uh, soldier pile and a lagging wall there. Uh, and, uh, but this, uh, the, the westbound site, site characterization is uh, what was, what I, I found uh, the, the most uh, fascinating. We put 35 test borings to, uh, to evaluate the site, to, to, and then the, and six slope inclinometers to measure the, uh, the slope uh, movement, and then 22 uh, uh, piezometers to, to evaluate the water that's within the slope, and then uh, three uh, electrical resistivity lines, some geophysical testing, but but and then and then Golder came through and did a, performed a detailed geologic mapping of this area, to uh, and they identified four individual landslides that in in this uh, area, and they put it on a con set of construction plans. And this is a 50 foot grid, so there's it's, this is a lot, and they applied all the different formations that they found. And, and then they designed a, a, an anchor system to, to restrain uh, th this slide. Uh, there, uh, the, uh, the bid plans, uh, we had uh, design loads of 80 kips uh, all the way up to 317 kips, which is a lot. Uh, and and the, the steel, uh, cables that were used were three stand, strand and seven strand and nine strand. And uh, the blocks that, uh, that they tensioned against, uh, there were 1,700 of them. And uh, so we, uh, we led it to bid uh, May 15th, 2020. Uh, it was uh, a low apparent bidder was $33 million. And that sort of made me anxious because the next bidder was, there was a really large discrepancy in the bids. Uh, and uh, not too surprising, they submitted a change, uh, a value engineering change proposal. Uh, and uh, they, it wasn't really that innovative. They just reduced the 1,700 blocks to about 600 and increase the tension load uh, to about twice that much. I'm really having a difficult time with this. So I have no test load data on this Pennington shale at all. We just had, had all we've had is problems with it. So I was like, well, let's get some test load data. And they did, and they test loaded it to 500 kips, and it was approved. So. Uh, they, uh, well, I wasn't so disappointed in the VECP, uh, the way it worked out. Uh, what I was most excited about was the site characterization that we did. And uh, the, um, the contractor did absolutely no further geotechnical work on the site. They relied solely on the one that we prepared, and uh, that made me kind of proud. Um, so their their uh, their anchor drilling plan uh, was a lot smaller. Uh, the red the the red lines on top are like 150 feet, but the blue lines on the bottom are like 250 feet. So this is a major civil work. Uh, the anchor drilling. You see these big, powerful drills they have these days? We've never had anything like this. Uh, it, it, and certainly not, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, so they, they, uh, they had three drill rigs on site. And they, had t they maintained two all, all the time, uh, you know, m due to mechanical breakdowns. One's always uh, gonna, gonna be out of, out of pocket. Well, and uh, we, we uh, you know, we, we're just not drilling holes in the ground. We, we had a certain inclination we have to maintain because the top five rows were going into the sandstone, and which we 
you know, located and spend a lot of money doing it. So they, uh, they're using uh, uh, a tool to, to measure the inclination and they comply with the plan standards. And this, this strand placement, oh, uh, well, you know, you, this, uh, this comes onto the site prefabricated and, uh, you know, they, they take it off the low boy and um, haul it up there, transport it up there with this specialized equipment and these really experienced uh, labor force, they, they, uh, they insert it into the hole. Come on. And the concrete blocks, okay. Uh, the contractor asked that they uh, be allowed to have a precast site on, uh, there, there on the mountain. And, uh, okay. Uh, but then they, uh, they successfully do this, but now, now they have a 22,000 block, which they, uh, you know, they, they somehow transport up, up the hill uh, using a crane and a track hole. Uh, this is really, uh, really impressive work, especially to me. I, I have a particular passion for this. Uh, and then enter the final position. Can you hear, hear me okay? I'm stepping away. I think it, this clicker works a little better that way. Uh, they, uh, they're excavating benches uh, the, prior to the, using the drills. Um, well, and, and the, the tensioning. Okay. Uh, this is their load frame. Uh, it's, a, it's a jack, uh, and they, they take this, the, the individual cables and uh, put this through a coupling that uh, I bounced right through. And then uh, th their load frame is actually this e uh, excavator, the track hoe. So they're, they're measuring uh, the load and, and deflection at the same time. And, and turning in uh, these graphs, uh, these, the paperwork, and uh, to be evaluated by the engineer, and, uh, and, and ultimately when they meet the design load, they lock it off, and uh, this is a, a close-up of, uh, of, of that. And they're using Excel to uh, administer the uh, QCQA, and pay estimates, and I, I pleaded with them to you know kind of use a database or something, but they they didn't want to do that. Uh, but we're clearing and grubbing in April 2021. Uh, in October, they bring their first drill rig out there, and they're sort of getting acclimated to the site. And uh, in, in November, subsequently, they're, they're they're bringing out the concrete panels. And uh, in March of 22, they're moving into a different zone. Uh, and, and just some more uh, UAV photographs that were taken monthly uh, that I, I thought were rather interesting. Here's from the ground. You see there, uh, Portland cement tank on, uh, up on the upper westbound of I-40 there. This is near Kingston. Uh, and uh, I sure want to show you my, uh, my Jeep. And this is taken on August 15th. And uh, they, uh, they're hoping their milestone uh, completion of drilling by uh, October, uh, November 15th. Um, and uh, I sure appreciate y'all uh, uh, sticking around. And uh, I'm Robert Jowers with the Tennessee DOT. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I have. Uh, and and uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to speak to y'all. Uh, is there any questions? Do we have time for questions, Ken? Yes, uh, you, uh, you in the white shirt. Okay. Did the contractor conduct any pilot tests first before going full scale? 
Prior to that, yes, that's a good question. I, uh, I, I, want, I, wanted, uh, I requested them to, to perform load tests because we don't have any load tests on this formation. And uh, that's the reason, one of the reasons we were real conservative and had 1,700 elements. Uh, this, uh, we wanted to ha have it equally distributed and equally loaded and lightly loaded, but eh, they, they, they uh, said, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna load it to 500 kips and uh, there was a lot of risk in that. And that's the reason I, I, I asked them to demonstrate that it could be done. Because if they came, if we accepted the VECP and they came out there and they, they couldn't, it couldn't be done, well, where are you then? Nice, thank you. In the blue? Yes, I wanted to ask if the fact that you're in an earthquake zone has an effect on the Tennessee Hill movement and your drilling. Do you have that as part of your platform? Well, we have a pretty significant seismic zone in West Tennessee due to the New Madrid seismic zone. It's it's pretty the light in, in this area. Now in near Chattanooga, uh, we, we get some uh, earthquake uh, forces due to you know, the zone in South Carolina, but, uh, but we, it was considered, but I'm the owner. Uh, I, uh, I, I asked the engineer to uh, con consider uh, all these uh, and he signed and sealed all the plans. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Well, once again, thanks, thanks a lot and